Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to LMC TV Varsity Sports. With Will Botkin, this is Steve Anastas at Manchester Field at Mamaroneck High School. Today's matchup is the White Plains Tigers versus the Mamaroneck Tigers. Mamaroneck is 4-1 on the season, 2-0 in New York State. They earlier this season had a tournament down in Florida where they went 2-1, coached by Mike Schiaparelli two-time state champion in 2008 and 2009. Will, it looks to be a fun matchup today against their rival in Westchester, the Tigers of White Plains. What do you see happening today? Well, it's definitely going to be a fun matchup. This is uh, the Marinick Tigers' first game since last Wednesday, so they're going to be throwing uh, Kumar Nambiar on the mound. He's been having a very good season. It's going to be exciting to watch him pitch. So we'll be back in just a minute to get the action started here on LMC TV Varsity Sports. Here we are at the first home game of the 2015 season for the Mamaroneck Tigers. They're hosting the, the White Plains Tigers, as we were talking about in the pregame, Will. Uh, they have a pretty good record against White Plains over the past couple years. Haven't lost to them too much in the past several years. Yeah, they have not lost a league game yet this season. I know that the team coming back from the Florida trip was a little tired. Uh, this is their first game back from the Florida trip, so uh, it's good to get, finally get out there for those guys. So they bring out their ace, Kumar Nambiar, who will be going attending Yale in the fall. Uh, just to give you the lineup really quickly, we've got at first base, actually we'll go in order, uh, Anthony Pecora playing shortstop, will be batting leadoff. Kumar Nambiar in the two hole is pitching. Peter Matt will be the three hitter, he's playing third base. And Andy Gross is the cleanup hitter in left field. The first pitch is a strike. Right down the middle, fastball for Nambiar. Gets the game started with the strike. 0 and 1 to the leadoff batter. Kumar Nambiar, undoubtedly the best power pitcher. He throws faster than anybody else on the team right now. Steven Rand, number nine, is the leadoff hitter for the White Plains Tigers batting, playing center field. Takes one high. Ball one, it's a one and two count. Pop fly coming up right towards us. Foul. So continuing the lineup for the White Mamaroneck Tigers, Andy Carlin is your five hitter, he's catching. Andrew Summer is playing first base. Number six hitter. Another foul ball right at us again. Looks like the bat is having a tough time keeping up with these pitches. Steven Rand definitely a little bit late on these pitches. <laughs> Nambiar is bringing the heat right here. Ben Steinberger is going to be batting seventh, and Kezi Jackson will be playing right field in his place. Nice play from Miles Houghton coming in, charging on the weak grounder to second base. Also, a good smart play by Kumar Nambiar being there ready to back up the throw. Definitely. And then finishing out the lineup is Miles Houghton at second base and Emerson Genovese playing center field. He will not be batting. He's got the... Uh... That's, oh, yeah, Kezi Jackson. I apologize. Well, no problem, not at all. Emerson Genovese will be batting. Right. Center field. So now batting for the White Plains Tigers is Ricardo Mendez, and he lines a shot up the middle. Good impressive string, swing right there. Single for Mendez, and he's on with one out. Ball fielded cleanly by Genovese, and he gets the ball back in. So now we'll see how the Southpaw Nambiar's move is to first base. This is going to be an important inning for the uh, White Plains Tigers. It's good that they got a base run out there. Only one out left, and now they've got the uh, heart of their lineup coming up. Dan Latito will be batting for the White Plains team. He grounds out hard to third base and just misses the double play. Tough turnaround there for Miles Houghton. Just th threw a tough ball there. 
Peter Matt fielded it cleanly, threw it a little bit wide of Houghton. Houghton didn't, wasn't able to turn the ball quickly enough. And now so there are two outs. White now, Plains with the number four hitter up here. All right, striding to the plate is the big man, Phil Tortorello, number 32, batting from the right-hand side. A nice wide stance. And there we have Nambiar throwing over for the first time today. Safe at first. With that throw, I almost feel like he wasn't even trying to get him out, just try to keep him close to the base. Yeah, let him know he remembers that he's there. Breaking ball in for a strike, strike one. So Nambiar, as is often the case with his pitching prowess, gets ahead of the batter, 0-1. That first pitch strike is so important, especially at this level. Throws fastball down the middle. Tortorello is on the pitch, but uh, just under it, fouls it straight back. So it is 0-2. So far, these uh, White Plains Tigers have done a good job at at least making contact, making the fielders make plays. They caught a bit of a break on that potential double play ball. Fouled away again. He was going on the play, so it remains 0-2. It's interesting that they decided to have him steal there. Kuma could have pitched out and they probably would have got him. Swing and a miss or a foul tip out. And that'll end it for the top of the first. So with the first half of the first inning completed, it is nothing, nothing. We'll be back in just a minute on LMC TV, Varsity Sports. So we're back at the bottom of the first inning. 0-0 zero, zero after a uh, good pitching start for Kumar Nambiar. Right, the starting lineup for the Mamaroneck Tigers. We'll give you in just a second, but let me just tell you that pitching for White Plains on the mound is number two, Mac Innes. He is a junior, plays several different positions, and he'll be the pitcher for today. Leading off for Mamaroneck is Anthony Bacora. He is also the shortstop. So Pecora sees one in the dirt in the other batter's box, takes the first pitch for a ball. Pecora is a senior, has been playing in the Larchmont system for several, for the Mamaroneck system for several years. One thing I've noticed with this Mamaroneck team right away is that they're very chatty in the dugout. That's something that uh, Coach Ciaparelli always seems to emphasize with all his teams. Definitely, he wants a very active dugout. Nice rip into right center field for a single to get the home opener started in Good fashion for Mamaroneck. Pecora on with a sharp single up the middle. Yes, that is a rule of uh, Coach Chaparelli's. No one can be sitting in the dugout. He wants everyone up and active and supporting his teammates. That's something, as someone who played in the uh, travel system all throughout my childhood, that's definitely something that the entire town seems to like. Just get up and be active. It's an important part of baseball because it's very easy to become lethargic in baseball. It's a thinking man's game. It moves somewhat slowly. And uh, if you let it, it can really start to slow you down. So you have to stay up and stay active. A body in motion tends to stay in motion is the saying for players in the field. And that sort of energy also has to be translated in the dugout. Something I also noticed as uh, a batter is just you know, it's kind of fun to hit with all these guys yelling at you. You also, it seems like every team has one, one or two guys that just love to yell. Definitely. They like definitely. to leave the They chance. are sort of the cheerleaders on the bench. <laughs> uh, the, sort of the, the heart of the dugout. Mac Innes throws over to try and keep Pecora honest at first base. The speedster does not look to run. And the lefty Namiar sees the first pitch for a ball. One and zero oh to Nambiar. He's going, and the throw is there and gets him on one hop. An impressive throw from Andy Iglesias. That's an aggressive play call from the Miranda coaches, and it almost looks like the shops out there to uh, tell the umpire maybe he doesn't agree. Yeah, definitely. Uh, right off the bat, he's looking to. Uh, 
Make sure that the ump is uh, sure of his call there. It did look like Pecora got under that tag, but oftentimes, even at the high school level, if the throw beats them, they will give the call to the defense. Interesting, when Marinick High School has come out pretty aggressive swinging on the first pitches and going for a steal in the first inning. They are not afraid. Nice shot from Nambiar. Brought in by the center fielder. Rand is there to make the play, so now that's two down. In the bottom of the first, Nambiar gets a good swing on the pitch, but fly balls in this center field are a place that go to die. There is a lot of room out there and a lot of time for them to get under it. Two up and two out, but those are definitely two impressive hits from uh, Pecora and Nambiar. So now at the plate is Peter Matt. Hits a sharp grounder to the shortstop. Makes quick work of it, and that will end the first inning. So, three up, three down in somewhat unconventional fashion with the, caught, the man caught stealing at second while Nambiar was at the plate. We'll be back in just a moment. We're back with the top of the second inning. No score in the first by either team, so Nambiar back on the hill for Mamarnik. And the first pitch. A little high for a ball, 1-0. and oh. A quick first inning, no one made it to, uh, no, no runners even made it in scoring position. Well, Brendan McDonough, number seven, is the batter, the left fielder for White Plains. And another ball. Temperature's st starting to drop over here at uh, Manchester Field, and um... could have a little bit, little bit of rain later in the game. Hopefully, it'll hold off. Fouled off. So the second pitch was a strike. Uh, now it's again. a two-two count. Nice pitch from Nambiar over the bag and fair. And Andrew Summer handles it easily for the first out. Marinette goes around the horn and back to Nambiar, and we will see now. Another thing we saw was every outfielder said, one out, two more to go, and just another sign that Shep really likes to hear his kids yelling. The batter now is Mike Ainsworth. Ainsworth is the shortstop for White Plains. He bunts it foul for the first strike. 0 and 1. Interesting that these had to bunt down the third base line. Wasn't successful, but Peter Matt was playing a little deep. Maybe he's going to have to take a couple steps in. Just watch out for that. Well, I suspect this is one of their faster players, too, trying to uh, steal a hit and get something started here in the second inning. Beautiful pitch down the middle for strike two. Nambi are doing well to start the game. Oh, beautiful breaking ball. Gets him just in the high end of the strike zone. He goes down looking, and that's two away here in the top of the second. Like we said earlier, this will not be uh, Kumar's last season playing baseball. He's going off to play Division I baseball at Yale University next year. Strike one to Spencer Lotus. Kumar Nambiar loves to pitch at a very fast pace. Third base coach might just be trying to uh, slow down the tempo here. Yeah, one of the sayings in baseball is the human rain delay when a pitcher is very deliberate on the mound. I can say that Kumar Nambiar is the antithesis of that. He works fast, he stays in the strike zone throughout the game, a very efficient pitcher. So makes for a rather quick game. Oh, beautiful breaking ball falls in the zone for strike two. So Lotus looks at two strikes and he swings, but the ball goes to the backstop. We'll see if he has time to get there and he does. 
Nice play from Andy Carlin. Gets the ball down to Andrew Summer. So Andrew to Andrew ends the inning on the strikeout swinging and the drop third strike. Three up, three down for White Plains. And we'll be back with the Mamaroneck bottom half of the second inning just after this. So we're back here at the bottom of the second inning. Now up is the lefty, Andy Gross. Number 44, up calls for time. Pitcher was standing on the rubber a little too long for his liking. No batter likes to be standing in his ready position for too long and then he, they get a little uncomfortable. Gross takes a strike at the knees for strike one. 0 and one count here in the bottom of the second inning, no score at Manchester Field and Mamaroneck High School. Andrew Gross, one of those players that has power and speed. I actually uh, played on a few baseball teams back in, a few years back. Gross with the uh, traditional ready, 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 no. Swing, 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 stop. Look there at uh, ball one. The off-speed pitch fools Gross and he is out in front of that one. One and two count. Based on the looks of it, we might be uh, looking at a pitcher's battle. Two strike count to Gross, fouls that one off, so he'll live to see another pitch. Coach Chaparelli, the two-time state champ, as we mentioned, in 2008 and 2009, had a outstanding crew of Division I baseball players then. He has several players looking to move on to Division I programs here as well. And a beautiful line drive up the middle from Andy Gross. Keeps the action going here. Center field has been busy all day. Gets things started, rather, in the bottom of the second inning for Mamaroneck. It's always one of those awkward things when Mamaroneck plays White Plains. You want to say for the Tigers, but of course both teams are the Tigers, so you got to sort of change up your vernacular. Yeah, it is awkward. I don't know why they both decided to choose the same team. Yeah, it's one of those uh, chicken and the egg situations. Who came first, White Plains or Mamaroneck? I believe White Plains was the first team to claim the name, but that's all right. Mamaroneck has every right to it as well. <laughs> Besides, Mamaroneck Tigers flows better than White Plains Tigers. That's right, that's right. I like the sound of it. Innes throws over to keep Gross honest, as you mentioned, trying to keep that speed in check. Now up is Andy Carlin, batting fifth from the right side. And another throw over as Gross dives back into the bag. Still no count on Carlin. Carlin, one of the standout players for Mamaroneck. Yeah, Andy Carlin is the uh, team captain. He's going to be heading to LIU, Long Island University, next year to play baseball. So that just adds to the list of Mamaroneck baseball alum in D1 colleges. Coach Chaparelli takes a lot of pride in his players, nurturing them growing them and developing them as players and as men. Uh-oh, here's double play action here. Gets the throw over, but pulls him off the bag. So Carlin is safe at first on the fielder's choice that wipes out Andy Gross. That's a good slide there by Andy Gross, forcing him to the outside, and that's how he missed the throw. So one down here in this bottom of the second inning. Carlin on first, and that brings up Andrew Summers. So three Andys in a row. We have Andy Gross, Andy Carlin, and Andy Summer. It's a three-headed monster. Andy Summer is actually heading to Amherst College to play football next fall. A fantastic school. Andy Summer is a fantastic student. He was the Con Ed Player of the Week uh, during the football season and is also, I believe, on the debate team. Tremendous athlete, tremendous scholar. Oh, that, that throw is high and outside. And so Carlin will take second base. Some pretty aggressive chance coming from the Marinick dugout. They are trying to get into the pitcher's head. Although I do believe that Innes is probably just shaking it off.
So Summer has a runner in scoring position. They'll look to get him home with a hit here. Another ball in the dirt, and Carlin is safe in third, and a throw wild by the catcher, but is corralled by the third baseman. Not a great, great throw from Iglesias there. Spencer really Lotus was able to stop it, though, in foul territory as Coach Chaparelli gets out of the way. So now, with uh, one out in the bottom of the second inning, a sacrifice, sacrifice fly will get the job done. Easy, easy for me to say. Yeah. All right, we have timeout, and it looks like the umpire is going over to speak to the bench. Oh, I think he's telling the on-deck circle. Yeah, if he's going to be in the on-deck circle, he's got to have a helmet on. Uh, we've seen, especially with the lefty batter up, we've seen some sharp line drives off the bat spell real trouble for third base coaches, first base coaches, dugout, all sorts of people. So they want to uh, protect the health and safety of the players. And I think what he actually told them is you're only allowed to have one batter in the on-deck circle at a time. So back to the action, Andy Summer at the plate with no count. Or actually, sorry, that's a, that was a 1-0 and count, and now we have a 1-1 one one count as Summer looks at the first strike. Actually, you know what? I'm realizing it's a 2-1 and one count because that second pitch was in the dirt. And that's what got Carlin over to third base. So now it is a two and one count. Mack is certainly not afraid to take his time on the mound. This is third or fourth time a Marinick batter has taken the timeout in the box. Up, pitch in the dirt again. And Carlin is in with the first run of the game. So Mack Innes a little wild here in the bottom of the second inning and uh, that plates the first run. Intelligent base running skills from Andy Carlin. One thing Shap does definitely teach his kids and preaches up and down is to be aggressive and take advantage of every opportunity. You saw it uh, bite them a little bit with the caught stealing, even though he was safe. Uh, the call was out, and now Carlin scores the first run for Mamaronek. So Andy Summer looks to get things restarted here as he's walked in four pitches. Five pitches, sorry. Yeah, McInnes has been a little wild here. So Summer is on first, and now up to the plate is Ben Steinberger, ben batting from the right side. Ben Steinberger's got to be going first pitch take. I know that they like to come out aggressive swinging, but he's been pitching a lot of balls lately. Steinberger is the designated hitter for Mamaronek with Kezi Jackson playing right field. I stand, I stand corrected. And Steinberger, first pitch swinging. Yeah, there you go. A little bit out in front of that one. Grounds it down the third baseline. Foul for strike one. Action is back in after the pause for the foul ball. Nice move over to first base. Keeps Summer on the bag, safe at first. Mackinus has done a good job of keeping his runners on first base. He's got a good, he's got a good move. He definitely does have a good pickoff move, Will. From the stretch, Innes deals. Out in front is Steinberger. Swing and a miss. One and one count for Mamaronek. One out. One nothing lead for Mamaronek over White Plains in the bottom of the second inning. You can hear the chirping in the Mamaronek dugout. They are staying lively and active over there. Steinberger looks at strike three. One thing I like to see is they say a sign of a good baseball player is if they have a dirty jersey yes. early in the game. They're all over the field. I managed to actually play an entire summer of baseball, 45 games, something like that. Never got my jersey dirty once. <laughs> and I guess that's why you're yeah. up here sitting with me now, Will, isn't it? Exactly. I, was, I just wasn't, wasn't in my nature. Now at the plate is number three, Miles Houghton, batting eighth for Mamaronek. 
the basketball star, junior forward. Oh, and he's out. Another tough call as Andrew Summer is picked off of first base to end the inning. A ball in the dirt. The first baseman digs it out of the dirt and seems to get him right on the derriere as he steps on the bag. So that'll end the inning here in the second inning. One run scores on the wild pitch by for Andy Carlin, scoring the first run of the game for Mamarnik. We'll be back in just a moment with the top of the third inning here on LMC TV, Varsity Sports. Now up is the pitcher, Mac Innes, and the first pitch is fouled straight back for strike one. Nambiar, of course, still on the bump for Mamarinek. The star pitcher has been pitching for the varsity squad since his sophomore year. A star player here in Mamarinek. He actually did not play basketball this year, even though he was one of the starters or key players excuse me, for Coach Carver last season. As a member of his gym class, I can say that he did not lose his basketball talent. <laughs> dominating in rec basketball in the gym yes. class, I, I guess. Yeah, dominating in the gym class. I mean, he'd leave you with sprained ankles. It was, it was bad. That last pitch was in the dirt. Two and one for Nambiar to Innes. Here's another pitch. Fielded foul. Carlin tried to get himself in fair territory, but the ball was foul. He, I guess, did not get himself fully in fair territory. That was a good play by Carlin, though. He kind of tried to deceive the umpire. almost got him, too. Right. Well, if you're able to be standing fully in fair territory when the ball is fielded, the ball is fair. And obviously, he tried to get his feet inside the line, but wasn't able to do so before touching the ball. And there Ennis goes, down swinging, fooled badly by the off-speed pitch there. So that's one away for Mamarinek. Another quick strikeout for Kumar Nambiar. Yeah, Nambiar in full control here. Now batting is the catcher, Andy Iglesias. Iglesias has a twin brother, Manny Iglesias, who was also a catcher for White Plains. Both players are the catchers for the squad. First pitch is called strike, strike one. Maybe catching just in their jeans. And the Iglesias looks at two quick pitches, four strikes, and he's down 0-2 here with one out in the top of the third inning. And Nambiar pitching once again. Quick, quick pace for Kumar Nambiar as Iglesias fouls that one back. The count remains 0-2. Kumar Nami are definitely not taking his definitely not taking too much time out there. A high fly ball from Iglesias. Over to make the catch in impressive fashion is Andrew Gross. Tracks it down just as he's entering foul territory. Iglesias sends that ball about 280 feet down the line, but it is fielded cleanly by Gross, and there are two away. That's gotta be a tough read for Gross because. The fence isn't really clear, and it's not really obvious as towards when it kind of comes in. There's no direct pattern to it, so got to be tough to make sure you want to hit a fence there. Are we back to the top of the order? I believe we are. So now batting is. Rand, the center fielder. Right, Stephen Rand. Rand squeezes one in between third base and shortstop for a single. It is, <coughs> it is not easy to get a shot in between Anthony Bacora and Peter Matt on a ground ball. Rand just did that. Rand grounded out to Houghton in his first at bat, this time going to the left side of the infield. A seeing eye single, as they say. So, one man on with two outs. Nambiar with a quick throw, and he's safe at first base. That's what a lefty can do. Nambiar has a variety of pickoff moves. <coughs> <laughs> 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 
most of which the runner doesn't even seem to really know when they're coming. First pitch in for a strike. Owen oh, one to Mendez. Oh, high pitch, and he has him at first base. Beautiful snap throw from Andy Carlin. Nails him at first base, and Rand is down for the count. Three outs, ends the top of the third inning. The score remains 1-0, Mamarinek in the lead. We'll be back in just a moment. We're back here in the bottom of the third inning. 1-0 Mamarinek over White Plains. Now striding to the plate is Miles Houghton. Houghton was up as Summer got picked off, so he remains up and his batting count is wiped clean. First pitch, in for a strike. Strike one on the inside corner. Houghton decided to let that one go by. You know, as a coach, what you often say is you want to swing at your pitch not their pitch. Because if you're swinging at their pitch, you're rarely ever going to get the kind of hit that you're looking for. That pitch outside for ball one, one and one. The White Plains Tigers decided to keep McInnes out there. We'll see how long these pitchers go for, but so far they've both kept a relatively low count and pitching very well. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a lot of McInnes and Kumanambi here today. Innes struggling a little bit more on the mound. He's thrown 24 pitches, 13 of them for strikes. So he is throwing right now at a 54% strike to ball ratio, whereas Kumar Nambiar has thrown, that ball is fouled off straight back. Kumar Nambiar has thrown 37 pitches, 31 of them for strikes. So he's Unbelievable. way up there at 84% strike ratio. I would say that you're catching a little bit too much of the plate there, but his stuff is so dominant. He has no problem throwing strikes and daring the White Plains batters to hit it. Reminiscent of Matt Harvey's opening, uh, opening day pitch count had 66% strikes. Right, right, exactly. You want to be a little bit more in the high 60s to low 70s range because otherwise, you know, if you're catching too much of the plate, you start to become predictable. But again, with Harvey's stuff, when he's throwing in the high 90s, you can dare the even major leaguers, you can dare them to hit it. So Houghton lets that one go by for a ball to a full count and now rockets a hard ground ball up the middle for a single. So the speedster Houghton is at first base. We'll see if he can stretch that into a double or triple with some stolen bases here. Once again, the, out, the uh, center fielder, Steven Rand Jr., just seeing a lot of action today. Now the White Plains head coach, Marcel Galagani, who is a Mamaronek alum, is out to talk to his pitcher, try and either settle him down or take him out of the game. We shall see. It looks like he's just trying to talk some encouragement into him and uh, re, you know, reinforce what they're trying to accomplish out there. Only one run, but Marinek has been hitting the ball well. Like we said, Marinek loves to score late in the innings, late in the game. And Emerson Genovese is the number nine hitter today. He will finish out the batting order for Marinek. Genovese is a three-sport three sport star here at Marinek. He was a star wide receiver and punt returner for the football team a valuable man off the bench for the basketball team and his speed paying dividends here for the baseball team as he anchors the outfield in center. I believe he also runs track, doesn't he? I, I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't think he runs track, although he probably does run a lot. Just I think he did run sprints last year for them. I remember hearing about that during his uh, football oh, really? season. Interesting. Uh, that's something that really talented, fast players will do, where the track coach is just thinking, oh, I'll take your speed, and you just come over here and run some events when you can. That's very Innes, impressive. Innes throws over to first base. Houghton is quickly back. And Genevieve fouls the first pitch off for strike one. Emerson Genevieve is certainly a contender for class athlete for the class of 2016. Uh, he's going to get a good run for his money from uh, Alex Parkinson. Well, Alex is... Parkinson's a senior. Emerson Jeffries is a junior. Oh, there you go. I'm sorry. I stand corrected. Yeah. Thank you very much, Will. Yep. 
Oh, a nice pickoff move from Ennis, but Houghton is back again. Certainly for the senior class right now graduating, it's going to be tough to find anybody more athletic than Alex Parkinson. Alex uh, had a fantastic football season to follow up a disappointing injury-riddled season. He was playing great at the beginning of his junior year, broke his ankle on a really nice tackle. Oh, a nice bunt laid down by Genevieve. Rolls foul. They touch it up foul, and Genevieve will have to go back with a two-strike count. As I was saying, Parkinson had a, uh, a promising start to his junior season at wide receiver and safety, um, or sniper, as Coach Vitti calls it, um, but broke his ankle on making a tackle early in the season, missed the rest of the season and the basketball season, unfortunately, but he made up for it and then some starring for the Mamaroneck Tigers football team as they won their first playoff game in the playoff era in section one and then their first playoff game in the basketball season. Oh, another nice pickoff move, but just misses him. Yeah, Alex Parkinson certainly did his fair share for Mamaroneck Athletics. Parkinson will be attending Princeton. He had a tough decision between a Big Ten school uh, a, a military academy, several Ivy League schools, some Big East schools. There were several different schools after him. A lot of top Division I talent coming out of Mamaroneck is a nice thing to see happening. Gives a lot of hope and promise to the younger athletes in the program because as the older athletes get recognized, the programs start to become more aware of the burgeoning program that is Mamaroneck Athletics. Hmm, that could be good luck for me. There you go, Will. It's never too late. Yep. I know this class had, uh, the senior graduating class had five or six, and then maybe even one or two more uh, kids playing athletics in Ivy League schools. Right, and then we have other standouts like Kimmy Chaparelli, Coach Chaparelli's daughter. It's going to be attending, uh-oh, going to be attending Iona Houghton. Gets caught in a rundown. He got caught leaning the wrong way in, the, in another pickoff move. Oh, and Hodden goes around him and is safe. Oh, crafty move from Miles Hodden. Uses the baseline that he's allowed to use. Not running into the grass, but running on the dirt. Able to run around the rundown play and gets safe. Kept within the distance of the 10 feet he's allowed. Crafty side. We're going to get a, uh, looks like a visual demonstration from the White Plains coach, Marcel Galligani, just to see. Uh, he definitely was testing the limits of how much room he was allowed to use to avoid the tag, but it looks to be maybe a backup. Well, let's see. The coach is asking for an appeal to the home plate ump, and they're discussing it. We'll see what the call is. Oh, he's going back to his place at home plate. Looks like they're going to let that call stand. Interesting call from the umpire. He's definitely had his fair share of controversial calls. That could be a bit of a makeup call for Mamaroneck after a couple of pickoff calls and uh, caught stealing. Genovese remains at the plate. It's a one and two count. Genevieve's a little bit inside on that pitch. Fouls it off down the first baseline. Foul. It's been, it's been a long at bat for Emerson Genevieve's. It's got to be tough mentally for a hitter to stay focused on every individual pitch. Very true, Will, but at the same time, when you're staying in a long at bat, momentum seems to shift to the batter. The pitcher gets frustrated, wants to catch more of the plate. Ooh, a high pickoff move. Throw is high, but it is fielded by Mendez, and Houghton remains safe at second. So no outs here, one and two count to Emerson Genovese. One nothing, the Marinek leading in the bottom of the third inning with a runner in scoring position. A single should score him here. Oh, nice swing by Genovese, and they've got Houghton in a rundown. Houghton. Unable to avoid him there. So the fielder's choice wipes out the runner at second base. Definitely a trade-off that White Plains will take gladly, keeping that runner out of scoring position. Genevieve now at 
first base with one out. Coach Shepard did not seem too pleased with Miles Houghton's base running skills there. No, there is there is a cardinal rule in baseball that you never try and advance when the ball is in front of you. And that's exactly what Houghton did. So he pays the price there and is now in the dugout. Nonetheless, from Marinick with the top of the run up on and the runner on base, so not totally bad news. Pickoff move is close, but no cigar, so Genovese stays safe at first. The top of the order, Andy Pecora is up. Pecora had a line drive single to center field in his first at bat. Another pickoff move, and he is safe. Anthony Pecora, a member of uh, this graduate in class we've been speaking of, this baseball team is full of seniors that have made a difference for two or even three years on this team. It's really nice when you can get those players in when they're young, get them used to your coaching, your style, your system, and when they're super talented, obviously, that helps mm. too. Talent always helps. Talent always helps. Pecora swings at a pitch in the dirt for a strike one, 0-1 oh count. Second pitch is high at the shoulders for ball one. One and one. We're going to see how, how McInnes uh, treats Emerson Genovese. He's got to know Emerson Genovese is fast. He's probably going to try to throw a couple pickoff moves. And there we have it. Yeah. Certainly something that these, uh, the White Plains Tigers have been emphasizing is keeping the Mimernic base runners close to, close to their base. One thing that uh, being aggressive at the plate can do, though, is keep the pitch count low. And so Innes has only thrown 34 pitches so far today. Have to imagine as long as he keeps the score down, he will remain in the game for a while. Oh, a nice breaking pitch in for strike two. One and two count to Pecora. And the field dump is calling for a timeout so that they can clean up the area around second base, make sure that the base is visible for the ump to be able to make the right call. The umper does not want to be in a position to where he can't see if he needs to make a call because both coaches have been a little upset with some calls today. Yes, precisely. Oh, no, he's definitely out. Oh, several pickoff plays at the bags, two outs. Up, oh, A little bit of a misunderstanding by White Plains. They got a little over-enthusiastic there. Although if you notice, Coach Ciaparelli was not surprised, was not uh, unaware of how many outs there were at all. He stayed right there. He was mm -hmm. not moving. So Genevieve swiped off the bases and he will take a seat on the bench now or stand on the bench, as I mentioned, the rule being that no sitting on the bench during the game. Bacora grounds to shortstop, makes a running throw. He's off the bag, safe at first base. The throw pulls him off the bag. Tough call there for the ump when the first baseman's coming off the uh, bag. Good base running by Anthony Bacora. So with two outs, that brings up Kumar Nambiar. We'll see if he can help his own cause here. With Pecora on first base, try and keep this in and going. In Major League Baseball, obviously, uh, it's common that pitchers cannot hit. This is not the case in varsity level baseball, especially for this team. Kumar Nambiar right. batting second. You know, and that actually, Will, is an interesting point because it calls into question, obviously, all pitchers were hitters at one point. So how is it that they became so bad at hitting after all that time? I guess it's just because once they become full-time pitchers, they stop working on their hitting. Ground ball foul for an MBR. Yeah, by the looks of it, guys like Bartolo Colon simply just weren't practicing their batting skills. Right. Although I do have to give credit to Bartolo Colon. Uh, if he's listening to this, congratulations, because he had his first RBI since 2005 last right. week. Right, right. 
which is always exciting. So while this game will be broadcast at a later date, uh, tonight is the first home start for the Mets' Matt Harvey. So it's a very nice. exciting season for all those Mets fans out there. Long-suffering Met, Met fans haven't had much to cheer about lately. Uh, Nambiar fouls that one off down the third baseline so he can live to see another pitch. Didn't like that pitch, but knew that it was going to be called a strike and smartly decides to just simply send it foul so he can get another pitch, hopefully a better pitch to hit. He never even let go of that. He knew the thing was foul from the start. <laughs> Up, oh, another pickoff move for Ennis. Bakora is safe at first base. Oh, nice shot, line drive straight at the second baseman, Mendes, fields it cleanly, and that will do it for the third inning. So we're just about halfway through the game. And the Mamaroneck Tigers lead the White Plains Tigers 1-0. We'll be back in just a minute. We're back here in the top of the fourth inning. Nambiar still on the hill for Mamaronek. First pitch is a ball. It's funny to see the changing tempo between Kumar Nambiar and Mac Ennis. Mac Ennis certainly not afraid to take his time. Well, 2-0 and count. Kumar Nambiar seems like he has something to be, be at after the game. <laughs> he definitely does move quickly on the mound. 3-0 count for Nambiar. Manny Iglesias now in for <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. Ricardo Mendez is up. The second baseman who made the catch for the final out of the inning is now at the plate. And it's strike two. So after three straight balls, it's two strikes in a row. Both times Mendez saw he had ball four there. Both times Empire said, get back here. Sharp ground ball, Houghton goes to the ground to make the play, comes up firing and gets the first out of the inning. Impressive play there in the field from Miles Houghton as Dan Latita steps up to the plate. Foul ball down the right, right field line for Dan Lotito. 0 and 1. Ooh, Nambiar. Breaking ball did not break there, and it nails him right in the hip. So Lotito is down to first. Unfortunate though, like one of, one of his only few balls of the game has to be a hit by pitch. Speaking of which, Nambiar right now standing at a 78% strike to ball ratio. 35 out of his 45 pitches have been in the zone for strikes. Now at the plate is Tortorello. Fouled that one off. Strike one. Tortorella rocking a neon orange bat. Yeah, that is uh, Easton is now making a lot of uh, neon colors. Their Mako and their Mako Torque, as you might have seen in the Little League World Series in Williamsport, are very bright. Uh, nice pickoff move from Nambiar, but slow just to keep the runner honest.
You can see Tortorello does not take a step when he swings. That is to maintain a fast bat through the zone. Oftentimes that is done when uh, batters first step towards the pitcher is a little too slow and they find themselves late on too many pitches. You can tell with the strength and size of Tortorello, he doesn't really need to take a step to be a powerful hitter. Oh, nice snap throw, nearly gets him at first. Carlin to Summer, a pretty combination, unable to get the out there. Summer bowled the ball there, I'm not sure he would have had him anyway though. Tortorello here now with a one and two count. And Nambiar fires it past Tortorello for out number two. Impressive at bat pitching wise by Kumar Nambiar there. Cut them on his toes with a breaking ball and fired one right by him. Fastball to get him strike out swinging. Nambiar with his fifth strikeout of the game. Through three and two thirds innings, he's only given up two hits so far today and no walks. No walks other than hit by pitch. Right, right. So the runner was going on the play, but the ball was fielded by Nambiar. An easy toss over to first ends the top of the fourth inning. So we're past the midway point. The bottom of the fourth coming up just after this. So we're back at the bottom of the fourth inning. Now up is number 20, Peter Matt. And Innes remains in the game on the mound for White Plains. Matt fouls it off down the right field line. About 280 feet foul. Matt is one of the power hitters for the the Marinick baseball team has been playing since his sophomore year for varsity. Definitely something anybody uh, walking around this track wants to look out for is any potential fly balls hitting them. It's a beautiful track, a beautiful field, completely surrounded by buildings. It's actually very artsy, but uh, just a heads up, if there's a baseball game going on, watch out. Strike two to Matt. He watches the first ball, high and outside. One and two count to number 20. Peter Matt, also the defensive end for the Mamaroneck football team, had a standout season. A Little bit out in front of that one, but let it go for a ball. Peter two Matt, and two count. Peter Matt also used to play hockey as a goalie, but I guess he decided to give that up. Right. Baseball and uh, football. Seems Hockey like a is a very demanding sport schedule-wise, so. Mm -hmm. Ooh, breaking ball just high, so he works it to a full count, three and two. Score remains, one nothing, Mamaroneck. Nice shot into right field, but right at the right fielder, Dan Latito. Latito able to grab that one, and that's one away. Unfortunate, that's not the first time today that Mamirnik Tigers have hit balls right at the fielders. Yes. Only one nothing, but uh, Mamirnik has done a significantly better job hitting. Right, Same Coach Chaparelli is just looking for hard hit balls. He'll take that one all day because those are the types of hits, types of hit balls that find their way in for base hits and doubles. Now up is Andrew Gross. Gross is one for one on the day. He had a line drive single up the middle in his first at bat. That pitch is high for ball one, one and one. Gross wearing the all too familiar number 44, familiar to older New York fans as uh, Mr. October, Reggie Jackson's number. 
I wonder if that has anything to do with it. As a, uh, as a new generation type of guy, the only 44 I recognize is a Maud Bradshaw. Right, exactly, and I am quite certain that is probably not the motivation and the uh, impetus for his choosing number 44. That last pitch in for a ball, outside for a ball rather, so it's three and one. Nice swing from Andrew Gross, falls in down the left field line, and he will motor around for a stand-up double. So Andrew Gross is two for two on the day with two nice line drive hits. Certainly a good job by Andrew Gross just going the other way with an outside pitch and putting himself in running position. Although the left, the, um, the White Plains uh, left fielder definitely did a good job, uh, McDonough definitely did a good job getting that ball and stopping it before it hit the fence. Middle infield doing a little work trying to keep Gross honest at second. He takes a nice secondary lead as Andy Carlin steps to the plate. Carlin is 0 for 1 on the day. He hit into a fielder's choice earlier in the game. Swing and a miss at the first pitch, 0 and 1. Harlan's definitely one of the players in this team that could put a ball over the fence. Oh, they had him there. Gross was leaning a little bit himself there, and the second baseman came in, but Innes threw the ball high and to the right field side of second base. Drifted a little bit into the outfield grass, but not far enough for Gross to be able to make anything of it. So he remains safe at second base. And the count remains 0-1. Ball in the dirt, and Gross is going on the pitch, so he will have a stolen base with the ball in the dirt. Once again, like we said, aggressive base running from these Manic Tigers. Taking every base that they can, taking advantage of everything that is available to them. That's how they score their only run. Yeah. Aggressive base running, stolen bases. I believe it was Carlin, right? Yes. Who is uh, at the plate. So Carlin scored the only run for Mamaronek, and now he stands to get the RBI here with a sacrifice, sacrifice fly or a single. Another pitch in the dirt, two and one to Andy Carlin. Andy Summer, the lefty, on deck for Mamaronek. Oh, beautiful shot right at the center fielder. Oh, and he misplayed it. That is going to be at least three for Carlin as he races around. And he will go home. No, he is held. Coach Chaparelli holds him and wisely as the throw from the second baseman was clean and right at the catcher. He would have had him at the plate. So instead, it is a stand-up triple for Andy Carlin. And he does get the second run scored, or RBI, of the day. Just like we said earlier, you keep it hitting those hard balls in the outfield, sooner or later, it's going to work. It's going to happen. We just saw it there with a triple from Andy Carlin. So his, the first RBI of the day is the second run scored. Gross with the run scored, Carlin with the RBI. And it's 2-0, and another visit to the pitcher's mound for White Plains. Interesting that the uh, coach Shepherd decided not to send Carl in for the potential inside the park home run. Well, again, it's not about the uh, individual, it's about the team. And so while I'm sure he wanted to be able to give Carlin the home run there, it was a little bit of, uh, you know, of a gift because it was a line drive right at the center fielder who just misplayed it. You know, another cardinal sin is uh, your first step should be back his first step was in, and he paid the price. It's because interesting. that ball was right over his head. There are a lot of rules, and I remember when I used to play this. this is, these are rules that coaches will repeat to you, uh, you know, as soon as you're 10 years old. It's right. something that everybody knows, but it's interesting to still see at this high of a level, people making these mistakes. It's, it's hard not to. Well, and that's why you'll hear, you know, 
you'll be reminded as a player all throughout your life that even uh, the best major league batters have hitting instructors and fielding instructors because you have to be reminded over and over again a lot of things that happen are counterintuitive. You want to go after that ball but you need to be disciplined in where you're going and obviously that lack of discipline there cost the White Plains team a run. Of course with the runner at third he probably would have scored on the sacrifice fly anyway but now with only one out it would have been two outs with Summer at the plate, now it's one out and a man on third. First strike over for, first pitch over for a strike, 0 and 1. Pitch is high and outside. We've seen a lot Ball of pickoff, one. we've seen a lot of pickoff moves from Mackinac, although we have not seen one towards third base. Be interesting to see if he uh, attempts that. I know it's always a dangerous one. Yes, definitely, and it looks like the third baseman isn't holding him on, so I guess we won't get the pleasure of seeing his move to third base. And uh, the coach has brought the infield in, trying to keep that run from scoring. Ball in the dirt. Stopped nicely by Iglesias. We're at a pivotal point in the game with only one out. At Mimernick High School definitely uh, finding themselves with an opportunity to potentially bust this game open. Definitely. And obviously, as, as you're pointing out, that is why Coach Galagani is looking to keep that run from scoring. Another ball thrown by Innes. He is now facing a three and one count to Summer. He's gonna have to come at him here with a pitch over the plate. We'll see if Summer is gonna be able to do anything with it. Oh, he got a meaty one. He was a little bit out in front, fouls that one off. So now the count is full. That's a tough pitch to miss up on. I'm sure Summer wish he had that one again. Definitely. That is one he definitely could have ripped down the line for a home run if he had timed that up just right. But obviously, Mac Innes is doing a solid job on the bump for, Mamer for White Plains. So, you know, as they say in the majors, he gets paid too. <laughs> now, of course, in high school they don't get paid, but they are both capable athletes. He's on the mound for a reason, and he is obviously showing he's a very good pitcher. Oh, but there it is. Beautiful diving catch from Steven Rand. Makes up for his misplay on the previous hit. That was an impressive catch. But the sacrifice is completed nonetheless. Good job of hitting, good job of fielding, Good job of base running, and the third run scores for Mamarinek. He hit the ground hard there, too. That wasn't, that, that didn't look like a uh, completely smooth dive. Tough catch. Right, well, you know, they say whatever gets the job done. So now Ben Steinberger is coming to the plate for his second at bat. He struck out looking in his first at bat. Steinberger swings and misses at that one. Strike one. Ben Steinberger is a uh, DH, in case you're wondering why you haven't seen him in the field. Correct. Thank you, Will. Oh, nice shot. Fly ball coming out. Oh, a nice play by the second baseman as they collide. Uh-oh and he looks to be injured. Both players collided as... This is not good at all. This looks... As Mendez makes here. that leaping, lunging catch. We'll be back in just a moment here on LMC TV Varsity Sports. So we're back in the top of the fifth inning. Both players were up and off the field under their own power. Which is always good news. And Nambiar with his first pitch over the plate for called strike one. Good off speech. Yeah, sorry about that, Will. Good off speech, Bishop Kumar Nambier. Second pitch fools Ainsworth. Swings right through that one for strike two. Uh, second one is in the dirt. 
swinging, but they have time. Carlin fires down to first base and nails him just in time. Carlin showing off that strong arm he's got. That's the second time he's done that this game. Yep. Let it go all the way to the backstop and still get him out with a step to go. That looked to be about as hard a throw as Nambiar's thrown all day. Nambiar normally clocked in the mid to high 80s. And I'd say that throw down to first base was about that hard as well. So the first pitch was a ball. Second one fouled back to Spencer Lotus. So Kumar Nambia wears 41, uh, eerily reminiscent of Tom Seaver. Lotus fouls another one. A nice call there, Will. Will Bodkin with the old school reference to the Mets pitching great, Tom Seaver. I happen to be uh, quite the aficionado when it comes to old school Mets. All right, fantastic. Mostly oh, that, that ball is called fair right down the third baseline. So Lotus on with a single. I was going to say only really because when I look at new school matches, it's not, it's not as fun. No, there's really not much to talk about. Well, these days, I yeah, got to say, getting, you it's know. Getting it's getting exciting. It's getting exciting. It's getting pretty exciting. Their first gold, gold glove winner in center field. The first outfielder to win a gold glove, uh, I think, ever. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. Juan Lagares. Juan Lagares was the first ever? I think, I think, I think he, he was. was the first ever outfielder to win a gold glove. First pitch high and outside to Mac Innes, the pitcher for White Plains, trying to help his own cause here with a runner on first and one out in the top of the fifth inning. Second pitch just off the plate for ball two. He's going on the pitch, but Innes fouls it off. So the count is two and one. And Lotus is back at first. Good job by Innes extending the at-bat, making Kumar take up more pitches. You could see Nambiar's move was towards first base there all the way. So one pitch after Lotus was on the move, he decides to try and keep him honest, maybe a half a step or a full step closer to the bag. Oh, and a quick throw there. Does not get him. So two attempted pickoff moves in a row. Obviously, that runner has Nambiar's attention. He wants to keep the shutout intact. From the stretch. Nambiar does not go with the slide step. Being a lefty, he can get that leg kick going. He has a little bit more time to deliver to the plate because he's able to keep that runner honest. But it looks like the coach is asking for a potential balk call there. Oh, we should have a technical error in the scoreboard. There we go. So it wasn't, I, I guess I had thought that he was maybe looking for a balk because that was a pretty quick move by an Ambiar to the plate. But it was just uh, asking for a correction on the scoreboard. So the count is three and one. Three nothing Mamaronek over White Plains here with one out in the top of the fifth inning. And Innes fouls off a pitch again, for make, making the count three and two. So full count to the pitcher. Nambiar has thrown 12 pitches in this inning, now up to a pitch count of 62 on the game, 76% strikes. As Innes fouls another pitch back. Another foul ball up in their territory. Should have known if Kimmer was pitching. If I had known, I would have brought my glove. A lot of balls coming this way. I could uh, become a lucky fan as well as the play-by-play -play broadcaster. Actually, last time I broadcasted the game and Kumar pitched, I did catch a foul ball. Oh, there you go. Oh, this one's right at me. It's coming. A little shy. Unfortunate. That is unfortunate. Another pickoff move for Nambiar. 
Having a nice little three-man game between pitcher, catcher, and first baseman here. You can tell that Lotus wants to go. He does not. Ball high in the air, and Jackson Allen is there for the out. Second out of the inning. First play for Jackson Allen on the day. It's interesting when you have a talented field like that, and it's the first time he pitches the ball in the top of, top of the fifth inning. Right, exactly. You know, that's one of the things you always have to remind players from the early years, the youth leagues on up, is that you have to expect the ball to come to you on each and every pitch. So it was 65 pitches before Jackson Allen saw any action, and he was ready and up to the task. Now striding to the plate is the catcher, Andy Iglesias. Iglesias hits a weak, is that a bunt attempt? Looks like a weak bunt attempt. Yep, bunt attempt does not fool Nambiar. He's able to barehand the ball up the first baseline and underhand toss it to Summer to end the inning. Iglesias had flied out to left field in his first at bat and he is now 0 for 2 on the day after that failed bunt attempt. So at the end of the top of the fifth inning, it is Mamaronek 3, White Plains nothing. We'll be back in just a moment here on LMC TV. So we're back in the bottom of the third, fifth inning, 3 nothing. Mamaronek. Oh, nice bunt from Houghton, but right back at the pitcher. He bobbles it, still able to get him by a quarter of a step. Hot and speed down the line, does not get the job done, unfortunately, and he goes down on one pitch. Tennis back in with 63 pitches in four innings. That's a tough play by the pitcher there on the first pitch, kind of cut off guard a bit. Definitely. Especially, as you can see by his bobble, barely got him out. Now up the number nine hitter. Emerson Genovese, the center fielder, is 0 for 1 on the day. He flied out to left field in his first at bat. First pitch catches the inside corner for strike one. Genovese, as we mentioned, was a star on the football team at wide receiver and kick returner. He thought about the bunt there, but didn't square up and let that one go by for a ball. Catcher didn't see it coming either. Totally missed it. Genovese also pitches for the Tigers. Maybe we'll be lucky enough to catch him during our slate of games. We'll be broadcasting three or four games this season. Three games for LMC TV with the Mamaronex flagship sports program in the spring. And if you don't tune in to channel 34 cable or 77 Fios, then, oh, I apologize, 34 Fios, 77 cable. There you go, a little bit of inverted yeah, yeah. math there. Then you can catch us on uh, Twitter, Facebook, or online at just lmctv.org with a hyphen. No hyphen. No hyphen. We got rid of the hyphen to so, make things easier for the fans out there. Genovese with a nice sharp line drive to right field, but Lotito was there to bring it in for out number two. Now at the plate is the top of the order, Anthony Pecora. Pecora is one for two on the day. Pecora reached on an error by the shortstop and singled to center field in his first at bat. I wouldn't be surprised if this is uh, the end of the line here for Mac Innes. He's done a lot of pitches. Every man has got the top of the lineup coming up with a chance to kind of bury this game away. Slight correction on the previous batter. Genovese reached on a fielder's choice in his first at bat. Not a good pitch to swing at for Anthony Pecora there. Nope. One and two count to Pecora. Mack Innes now at 70 pitches on the afternoon. Throwing at a 61%. Oh, beautiful comeback line drive right at Innes. Innes gets out of the way, does not get a glove on it. 
So Pecora with another hit. Scary for the pitcher there, Matt Guinness. Definitely, that is why they've made a lot of technology available to baseball players, especially pitchers, padding for inside the hat, a heart guard, all sorts of different devices, because when that ball comes back at you, it can spell all sorts of trouble. Of course, it is at the player's discretion whether they wear that gear at this point. Pickoff move to first base is late. Bacora is safe. I saw that even they were designing an MLB pitcher's helmet, which looked yes, interesting. Right. So they're trying to test out all sorts of technology, trying to figure out what is not cumbersome, doesn't interfere. Pecora takes advantage of the pitch in the dirt and is safe on second with the wild pitch. As Nambiar is at the plate trying to help his own cause yet again, try and extend that lead a little bit. Give himself some breathing room. Now with a runner in scoring position and two outs, a single should score. Pecora with his speed at second base. Oh, bunt a little too strong from Nambiar. Ineffective there as Ines is able to field it and throw Nambiar out to end the inning. So as we move to the sixth inning, the score remains Mamaronek 3, White Plains nothing. We'll be back in just a moment here on LMC TV, Varsity Sports. So, Kumar Nambiar is back out for the sixth inning after throwing 66 pitches through the first five. Gets Steven Rand to chase the first pitch low. Strike one. Kumar Nambiar continuing his very impressive outing here as he goes in the sixth inning scoreless. Looking to uh, propel the Tigers into a 3 0 record league wise. And also, just a heads up, he is currently looking at a .76 strike percentage. He's thrown uh, 68 pitches, 52 strikes. Now 53 with that last one. Ground ball to Pecora at short. Easy work. It's always interesting the seeing the catcher. I mean, it's kind of tough to see the dugout, but the catcher runs up on balls to the third base when a shortstop to try to back that up. It's got to be difficult for someone who's, you know, tired because of the right, Having to squat all that action and still sprint down to first on every ground ball. But that is... Uh, catching. Right. Yeah, catching, especially in the hot weather, has got to be the most tiring position. Right. I mean, it's just brutal. And you can see that uh, Carlin is not using the knee savers that they've invented uh, to try and help the knees of the catcher. Um, I, I honestly don't know how they squat all that, all that time. It's got to be excruciating after however long. Yeah, knee savers are nice. They're something I used to take advantage of back in my uh, there you go. heyday. Mendez went around on that one, so he is called a strike on the swing there. Takes strike two right down the middle there. Nambiar still throwing heat. Definitely in the mid-80s on that pitch. Right on the outside corner. Nothing that Mendez could do with that one, and he goes down looking. Mendez needed to. He knew as soon as that hit the catcher's glove that that was a strike. Immediately started walking back to the dugout. Yep. Without a doubt. So Nambiar with his seventh K on the day. Line drive drops in for a base hit for Dan Latito. First pitch line drive gets him on. And the White Plains Tigers have a base runner here in the top of the sixth. So Nambiar giving up his fourth hit of the day, has a four hitter. Five base runners on the day with the one hit batsman. And Tortorello with a big swing at that pitch for strike one. Marinette getting six hits and three earned runs. And there with the fifth hit of the day 
for White Plains is Tortorello. So the White Plains Tigers finally getting something going here in the sixth inning. We'll see if we see a visit from Chaparelli here to talk to Nambiar. I know he trusts his senior ace. Pinch runner at first base, getting some speed on the bases. The White Plains Tigers decided to send in a Hauser, looks like. Hauser, yes. The sophomore. It uh, makes one wonder whether or not these two past consecutive hits off the Tigers are a product of Kumanambi are being tired or just kind of a fluky thing that isn't much to worry well, about. Well, it gets back to the fact that, you know, these players on White Plains are put on this team because they can hit the ball. It's not like Kumar Nambiar is the most unhittable pitcher mm -hmm. in the nation. Uh, he's definitely a top pitching prospect in high school baseball, but he is not immune to giving up hits here and there. But yes, a good point. You know, it's still to be seen whether he's starting to tire after 80 pitches. But the crafty lefty able to get ahead there. Or even the count at one and one. Not a good swing there from Brendan McDonough. It's interesting you can uh, actually hear the coach saying, right. look for a fastball and then react to it. And there he goes with the ball in the gap in between. Oh, and they hold the runner at third, even though it would have been safe because the throw from Andrew Gross sailed high over Carlin's head. Nambiar correctly there to back it up. Now bases are loaded as the second seeing eye single of the day gets through to the left fielder. I guess that was more of a legitimate single to left field. Yeah, that was a little more legitimate than the previous one we saw earlier in the game. Yep. Shepard looking like he's not going to take Nambiar out here. He's not even talking to him right now. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it seems Looks the Tigers like, are yep. up to something here. So Michael Ainsworth will come out of the game. And in comes Manny Iglesias. Pinch hitting. The umpire and the coach are talking about something else here. I think we're talking about substitutions here. Oh. The coach has to inform the ump of all substitutions and lineup changes. And we'll see how this fleshes out and where Manny Iglesias will go in the field, whether he just comes in for this at bat or whether he takes a position in the field in the bottom half of the inning. So bases loaded, two outs with Nambiar pitching to Manny Iglesias. First pitch in the dirt for a ball, and the White Plains dugout is revving up and getting amped up to cheer on their pinch hitter to try and make something happen to cut into this three-run lead for the Mamaroneck Tigers. Keeping a cool head will be pivotal here for Kumanabiar. Nice pitch on the outside corner for strike one. One and one count to Iglesias. The heat down the pipe, and Iglesias was not ready for that one. One and two count, and Nambiar gets back in control. We'll see if he can shut down this threat from White Plains. Nambiar's kept good composure so far. Smart pitch in the dirt, trying to get Iglesias to chase. He does not take the bait, so the count evens up at two and two. Swing in the dirt, swinging strike three, and he steps on the plate. To end the inning, Iglesias goes down swinging. The drop third strike is an out. And the coach has a little something to say for whatever happened there. 
at the end of the inning, but we'll move on. No harm, no foul, and no run scored for White Plains. Mamaronek holds on to their 3 0 lead. On to the bottom half of the sixth inning in just a moment here on LMC TV, Varsity Sports. In the bottom of the sixth inning here at Manchester Field, Mamaronek High School. The Mamaronek Tigers lead the White Plains Tigers 3-0. Innes is still on the hill at 73 pitches on the day. First pitch to Peter Matt is a ball high, 1-0 count. So Mike Ainsworth came out of the game for Manny Iglesias, who ended the inning on a swinging drop strike three, where Andy Carlin stepped on home plate, but Will, as you noticed, he had a little bit extra yes, for I think the, the coach, runner coming home. I think the coach maybe wasn't too happy with Andy Carlin. Not only did he step on the play and it was a force out, he also tagged him on the chest with the bare ball. I think the coach is maybe a little upset that that was unnecessary. And right, the, right. So he had something to say for Carlin, and Carlin didn't appreciate that at all as Peter Matt rips a line drive right at the second baseman, Ricardo Mendez, who makes a solid play on the ball, hit right at him for out number one. It is uh, not the first time this game that Peter Mattis has his lined out. He has not been too lucky with his uh, positioning of hits. Right, exactly, but I believe his first line drive was the one where I mentioned that uh, Coach Chaparelli will take hard hit balls all day long. Mm -hmm. Just like that, a line drive in the gap. We'll see if that gets through, and it does. Goes to the wall, and Andrew Gross with his second double of the game. Andrew Gross with a little bit of the celebration there on second base. Not exactly sure what that was, but is clearly content. So Steven Rand unable to cut that ball off as it gets to the 363 sign in left center field. And Andrew Gross with a stand-up double, his second double of the game. Gross is now three for three on the day. And at the plate is Andy Carlin. Looks like the White Plains coach is coming out to talk to his pitcher. And I believe he's, he might be making a switch, yes. That is it for first baseman Hauser is going to be coming in. Gehrig Hauser, the lefty, looks to be coming in to relieve Eric Mack Innes We'll be back in just a moment after this pitching change here on LMC TV, Varsity Sports. We're back here with uh, pitching change. Garrick Hauser, the lefty, now on the hill. First pitch is fouled back by Andy Carlin. He's got a pitching style similar to Clay. Mac Innes moves to second base. Clay Rabada pitching style here. Yep, there you go. From uh, Hauser. The sidearm delivery is drilled into center field. Steven Rand goes back and it bounces over the wall for a ground rule double by Andy Carlin. He stands on second base with an RBI and the lead is now 4 0 Mamaronek. An impressive. I mean, that thing would have been out left or center right field, no doubt about it. Uh, it's impossible to hit over that 400 foot center field fence. Marinick only recording one out on the inning. Runner on second, 4 0. Chance to. Uh... Oh, just as the pitch was about to be delivered, they realized that. Carlin's bat was still sitting right in the field of play. So Andrew Summer now bats, free from encumbrance. Sidearm delivery in for a strike. Strike one to Summer. Called strike, looked to be on the outside half of the plate. Once again, Summer looking for his pitch, not their pitch. And that was not his pitch. Again, not his pitch, but he decided to swing at it. 
fouled it off down the left field line. 0-2 oh, to That ball Andrew almost Summer. got picked off. Got a little lucky yep, The third baseman almost able to get to it. Plenty of room in foul territory in the left field side of the field here, Manchester field. So the 0-2 count to Andrew Summer here. Lefty on lefty. See if he can do something. Goes down and gets that one. It's falling in. Oh, nice play. And it drops. Almost a very impressive catch. Tough play by Mike Ainsworth. Snow cones it, goes to the ground, and the ball falls free. So Andrew Summer on safely with a single on the soft fly ball into shallow center field. Very difficult ball to catch. If he had caught that, it would have been a uh, top play of the game. Carlin had to stay at second, did not advance on the play because it looked to be caught, and he was didn't want to get doubled up there. So now it's first and second. Batting for Ben Steinberger. Is, Mar is Marcus Rodriguez. Ooh, Rodriguez late on that one. Batting coach is telling him, if you're gonna swing, swing. If right. not, then don't. You're just cheating yourself if you're gonna swing late and unsure of yourself, so. Marcus Rodriguez obviously trying to get into the flow of the game after being out for the first six. Fouls that one back over the stadium wall, otherwise known as the side of the school. That ball went on the way, I'm just hoping it doesn't come back off it. Marcus with an 0-2 count with one out and a man on first and second. Ball just low for ball one. Runners are not being held on by first or second. They're going on the pitch. Strike and a double play. Strike them out, throw them out. Ends the inning and Coach Chaparelli is Un can't believe what he's seeing. I, I don't even know how to describe it. He's just holding his hands up. Cannot believe that the third baseman just swung the tag down. I don't believe he even came close with that tag. And Coach Chaparelli was right there to see it. Again, a second situation where the ball beats the runner and the ump just assumes the out. Unfortunately for the Tigers, the Marinick Tigers, that ends the inning in a strike them out, throw them out. Chaparelli is livid with a capital L. <laughs> right, so the score at the end of six innings is 4 nothing. Mamarinek will be back with the last inning of play. We'll see if Mamarinek can close it out here. Kumar Nambiar coming back out to the mound, see if he can complete the complete game shutout just after this at LMC TV, Varsity Sports. First pitch of the seventh inning. A little bit high to start the seventh and it is a 1-0 count for Nambiar. The batter is Spencer Lotus and he rips a ground ball to Andy Pecora, who throws cleanly over to Andrew Summer for the first out of the inning, one away. Certainly no signs of fatigue from Kumar Nambia going into his seventh inning. Definitely not. He is looking as sharp as ever. Now up is the starting pitcher, Mac Innes, now batting, now playing second base, batting eighth. He is 0 for 2 on the day. Swing and a miss at the first pitch. Strike one. Innes Struck out swinging in his first at bat and flied out to right field to Kezi in the fifth inning, I believe. Looking to uh, redeem himself when it matters most. Yep. And what would be their final at bat? 
Mac Innes also with a very wide stance, does not go on that pitch in the dirt. One and two. Obviously, White Plains just simply needs base runners here. Shouldn't be looking to swing for the fences, just get on. Come backer to the mound. Nambiar underhand tosses it easily to Summer. And that's the second out of the inning. Two away as Nambiar climbs just above 90 pitches on the day, his 93rd pitch. 75% of them four strikes. Like always, it's been nothing but efficiency for Kumar Nambiar and his defense surrounding him. The catcher, Andy Iglesias, is up now. Two quick strikes right over the plate. Iglesias flied out to left field and grounded out to the pitcher. 0 for 2 on the day. 0 and 2 count, and here we go. Swing and a miss, and that'll do it. So Kumar Nambiar opens the home schedule for Mamaronek with a five-hit shutout. And that'll do it for the Tigers as they defeat White Plains four to nothing. Now they head to the uh, handshake line and move on to the rest of the season. Absolutely. So after a seven-inning shutout, Nambiar, I'm sorry, gives up six hits on the day. No walks, nine Ks, and one hits bat, hit batsman. He had a whip under one for the day, whereas Mamaronek is able to put together nine hits and four runs, all of them earned. One walk and only two Ks. A very solid game hitting for the Mamaronek Tigers. All around, the Mamaronek Tigers played a uh, very good BM baseball today on both sides. Definitely, definitely. So, let's see. The offensive star of the day, definitely Andy Gross with three hits on the day, two doubles and a single. Andy Carlin went two for three. Andy Pecora went two for three. And Miles Houghton, one for two, as well as Andy Summer. Round out the hits for the Mamaronek Tigers. Gross and Carlin, Gross with a couple of doubles, Carlin with one, both guys just proving their power, proving why they deserve to be in the four and five spots in the lineup. Right, right. Carlin with two RBIs and Summer with one. The last run was unearned. So as you see, the players running off some lactic acid in their body. That is a traditional move by coaches to try and run out the lactic acid that builds up in their body from throwing. Definitely a good idea. So that'll do it here from Manchester Field for the game action. 4 nothing victory puts the Mamaronek Tigers record at 5-1 and one on the season, 3-0 and oh in New York State play. We'll be back just after this with some post-game commentary and interviews with the coach and players here on LMC TV, Varsity Sports. We're here after a 4-0 victory with the offensive star of the game, Andrew Gross. Andrew was 3-for-3 three three on the day with two doubles and a really good game all around. Andrew, how are you hitting to this, these, this season? Uh, I'm hitting really well. I'm seeing the ball well. Donnie Novak, he's helping me a lot. Coach G, Shap, they're all helping me prepare for curveballs, fastballs, anything that they're going to throw at me. So it's a very strong program at Mamaronek, obviously continuing th the tradition. How do you see the outlook for the season with you guys? Uh, I think this team is one of a kind. I think we're going to do really well deep into the playoffs, and I think we have what it takes to make it deep in the playoffs.
We're here after a 4 nothing shutout, complete game shutout for Kumar Nambiar. Kumar, nine strikeouts and only one hit batsman on the day. You seemed in control from start to finish. Talk about your game today. Uh, yeah, I think that's definitely one of my pluses, uh, keeping the ball in the zone. Um, I hit one batter, but no walks, and I, I was able to control the curveball and the changeup well today along with the fastball, so it's a good mix. You definitely seem to keep them off balance for most of the game, getting stri uh, fastball strikes past them and you know s sprinkling in a bunch of off-speed pitches to keep them off balance. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I mean, all of our pitchers work on first pitch strikes. That's the most important pitch in the game, and so I was able to work on that today, and it worked out well for us. So uh, Kumar's third victory of the season, 3-0 uh, and on the season. The team is 5-1 and now. Uh, very successful outing, Kumar. Congratulations on the outing, and good luck the rest of the season. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. We're here with Coach Chaparelli. Coach, a solid outing for your team. Four, four runs, no runs given up, nine hits on the day. Talk about your team today. Uh, kids did a really good job uh, putting the ball in play, and uh, Kumar kept the ball balanced. Did a really good job. Didn't walk anybody, which is big. Nine Ks did a really nice job. Seemed like we uh, suffered from that classic umpire situation of the ball beating the runner and automatically calling the out, even though the tags were not applied. Well, I guess you, I guess you know I didn't see the first two play, play first and second. I don't think they've been tagged yet. So, you know, but I guess the ball beat them, so they got called out. Solid athleticism from your team as well as they were able to run the bases pretty well and make some s solid plays in the field as well. We made a lot of mental mistakes on the bases early in that game. And, uh, but other than that, we did a nice job. Uh, we hit the ball really hard. We lined out a lot. I mean, our outs were hard. Um, I think we did a pretty good job swinging the bats. As we talked about in the broadcast, I, I, we were sure that you'd be happy with, for example, Andy Summer hitting the ball hard. All you can ask for is hard hit balls, right? No, no he did. That was a great job. I Being on third, less than two outs, he had to drive to the left center. He got robbed, but he yeah, well, hit the ball really well. Yeah. So 5-1 and one on the season overall, 3-0 and oh in New York State. Uh, how do you see the outlook for the team so far? I like being 1-0 oh in the league. That's what it was today. <laughs> right. Getting one against White Plains. Uh, we got a tough game against them on Thursday. we got to bounce back and play a little bit better, a little crisper, and uh, a little hungrier on South Thursday. So that'll wrap it up here from Manchester Field at Mamaroneck High School. 4 nothing shutout victory for Kumar and Nambiar. Uh, a solid game all around for the Mamaroneck Tigers. Uh, a little bit of problem on the base paths. Yep, it was, uh, it was classic Mamaroneck Tiger baseball. We saw aggressive base running from the start. A player got picked off uh, right in the first inning trying to steal a base. But still, there was a little sloppiness, some mistakes they're going to have to you know, work on going towards the rest of the season. We'll be back in a couple weeks with the next game for Mamaroneck. They'll be facing the, the White Plains Tigers again very soon. Uh, for now, that does it here from Manchester Field. With Will Bodkin, I'm Steve Anastas. Thanks for watching. Thank you.